I was actually a basketball coach, coaching a regular team at the University of Namibia. And there was a, um, a lecturer who used to watch my practice. I didn't know about him. I didn't know, his, I didn't know about him. But uh, one day, um, as I ended my practice, he walked down to me and he asked me, he introduced himself and asked me if I were interested in assisting coaching a team that did not have a coach. Um, it's very strange because usually when, when I'm asked I'm a, to do something, I'm very buttoned up, I ask questions to, to understand what I'm getting myself into. But this particular day, I looked up at him and I said, well, I think I have enough time on my hands, I can do that. And he, he gave me a number of a, a woman to call and make arrangements, and I did just that. And she gave me a venue and a time and a day. And on that day, I got there and waited. And a car pulled up, a minibus, and the door opened, and I saw these athletes come out of the vehicle. Then I noticed something. I said, wait a minute. Um, the athletes coming out of this bus, I think they have uh, disabilities. I had never coached anybody with a disability. And I stood there and I said, well, what am I going to do? Because I've never received any training. Then I realized, well, they're human beings, I'm a coach, and they're human beings, and all I, that I need is to apply what I've learned. And that's how the journey started. Those were Special Olympics athletes. The game came on the field, and I started giving them instruction. My passion was simple, to make a difference because I'm a coach and I needed to make a difference because I saw that, hey, these athletes need somebody to, to, to help them get from step one to step two. And, and the other reason I was coaching regular basketball at the university rather than a club is my nature, I'm a teacher. I like to see somebody that is, you know, less skilled or in a place of need developed to a place of, you know, success. So students come to my try came to my basketball tryouts raw and then they get on the team, they become great players, and then they graduate they leave and they are replaced by others. So that continuous flow of getting new players coming in, training them is what motivated me. So similar in Special Olympics, uh, seeing, going to crack countries programs, coaching new troops, I mean training new coaches, and seeing the, the impact, the results the coaches are, the, the, the impact that the coaches are having on their athletes and getting that data and seeing the growth of programs. I've seen programs like Rwanda, Nigeria, conducted training in m many of these countries where they had you know, five, 500 athletes and today they are at 10,000 athletes. To build a successful Special Olympics um, a program, uh, apart from you know, the training and that mentorship, I think we all also have to be and this is really important. We have to be authentic. If, uh, and th that's one thing about you know, the, the population we serve. I think they have a gift from, from God that if, uh, if you're not, they will pick it up. They will sense it. And, and if you are, you will have success. And this is something that I picked up that uh, if you're authentic, and, and ensuring that what you do and what you say to them 
and how you work with them is, is you use the innocence of a child rather than do that with an agenda. If you're doing any, anything or any of this with an agenda, I have seen so many that have gone into Special Olympics with agendas and they've not gone anywhere because they're not truthful and they want to gain something from, from, from the, the movement and they will eventually make mistakes. It's not just like any, any, anything else in life. And I think that's, that's what is important is, you know, marginalized in many communities, including highly developed countries. And if we continue to do that, those that have been assigned to make a difference, I think that's more tragic than, than those, those that are doing it unintentionally. And I think that's, that's, that's the bottom line to say, we have to be authentic and we have to deliver our way. If I feel that I'm not there for the right reasons, the best is to say, I can't do this thing and work, work out myself. Most boards do not represent this population if not well trained, and that's in Africa. That has been our challenge, and that's, how, that's why we've had leadership conferences every single year from the time Dr. Dow took over to, to, for capacity building, to train leadership, to ensure that the leaders understand and they're doing the right thing. For me, the biggest challenge of, of, I think we have is ensuring that we have the right leadership in, in, uh, in, in most of these countries so that they, they deliver according to, to what they are assigned to deliver. Unified leadership, I think, should be defined as, you know, the ultimate, you know, uh, goal of le unified leadership is, is performance. And to perform, we can talk unified leadership, but if performance is not there by the athletes themselves, we can try to accommodate them. We can reach a stage where the community gets to understand unified leadership and involves the athletes. But we need to ensure that we, we have the athletes that have been trained to understand that they have that ability to deliver and they're confident enough to, to do that without without being questioned, without being doubted by anybody. Most of, the, most of the athletes' confidence is taken away over a very, very long period from the time they're born. The communities they've, they've, uh, they've uh, interacted in, their parents, their families, the schools they've gone to, people that have called them names, and so on and so forth. Negativity everywhere they've gone. Now, it's not something you can restore in one single training session. No. It's something that you have to provide. Like our athlete leaders in Africa region, we've demonstrated that. Look at Nyasha. Nyasha was not able to even speak to his board to challenge them. It didn't come overnight. Him too did not you know, come out of this and say, one session I've been talked to, now I understand. We had to go back and forth with many other people speaking to him. I mean, he's a gifted speaker, naturally, but he's bottled up because of his confidence. So you can see this coming out and he's getting better and he's now speaking. He's able to speak at the, it takes time. And I would need to find a formula in Special Olympics, a formula for confidence. That's the training we need to find. And it's not a training in a classroom. We need to find it. The reason I am who I am is because my society included me. And I have to do the same.